Hi everybody, this is Eric, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about my latest project that I worked on with my cousin, Alex. Um, this is called, we, we built a magneto hydrodynamic propulsion system. So basically, it is a way to propel water without any moving parts. Um, and I'll explain in a second how the, the science behind it. But basically, we have two main systems here. We have the the main pipe that the water flows through, and then the electromagnet. So to build the main pipe, we used PVC pipe. I think it's about, I don't know, an inch and a half or something. Um, and then we used paint sticks covered in aluminum foil as our electrode, our electrodes. And we actually put a third paint stick in the middle that doesn't touch either of the other ones just to increase the capacitance of the kind of of the plates. So we thought it would help the electron flow. So we have these three paint sticks um, acting as our electrodes kind of floating there. We use these little wooden pegs that go all the way through them to hold them in place. And then the two, each electrode has bolts coming out of it that make contact with the aluminum foil. So these are basically the contact points for each electrode. These two are the left electrode and these two are the right electrode. So you apply a positive voltage to one and a negative voltage to the other end and then you create um, basically a capacitor but because they're salt water the electrons will start to flow from one plate to the other plate. So that's one system. Then the other system we have here is our electromagnets. So what we use, we use a solid, it's either iron or steel, we're not 100% sure, a solid steel core. Um, and then we used this 18, Alex, was it 18 gauge? Yeah. We used 18 gauge um, double wire, double speaker wire, so there's two wires in it. And we basically wrapped it around the iron core. And then in order to c increase the turns in each one, we because it's a double wire, we wired like the white wire to the red wire of the opposite end of the coil and then that gave us double amount of turns because it went all the way through once and then it went back through the white wire so we have um three of those electromagnets that like i said are double the amount of turns that that we actually turned um so that makes them pretty strong and then we wired all three of those electromagnets in series um to actually increase the resistance so that when we put hooked up, up to our battery it wouldn't completely fry or get really hot. And then we just made some wooden cutouts to separate them. So that's the electromagnet and once and then the way it'll work in the water is you place the electromagnet over the the main pipe. So yeah that's kind of the basic parts. I'm gonna explain to you guys um, kind of the science behind our project. It is called the magneto hydrodynamic drive or propulsion system. So magnetohydrodynamic is long for MHD. So the way this works, um, it's based on magnetic field law principles. So I don't know the name of the law, but basically what it says is that if you have current flowing in one direction and you apply a magnetic field, current flowing through a wire in one direction, and you apply a magnetic field in a perpendicular direction to the current, then that current experiences a force that's mu mutually perpendicular to both the current and the field. So that is how the system works. Um, the system, again, uses no moving parts to move water because it uses electricity and magnets. So in our setup, we used a PVC, tube, PVC pipe. We used paint sticks covered in aluminum foil as our electrodes, and then uh, we made our own electromagnets. So again, the way it works is using the paint sticks as our electrodes, you can apply a positive voltage on one end and a negative voltage on the other, and that kind of create it creates a capacitor. But because this is submerged in salt water, which is a good conductor, the electrons actually flow from one of the electrodes to the other. So you have kind of a current, a current without a wire. You have a current through water. So there's your, there's your current flow in this direction or whichever, depends on which way you put the voltage. And then perpendicular to that, you place a, ma a magnet, or in this case an electromagnet, um, whose magnetic field goes either up or down depending on you know which way you orient it. And that will cause the electrons in the water to experience a force out of the page. So this force. 
and that's how the water moves. So um, you flip this, your current flows different ways. You flip the electromagnet, the force that the water, the electrons experience is the opposite way. So you can either flow into the page or out of the page, depending on which way this goes. So that's kind of the science behind magneto hydrodynamic drive. And now we're going to show you how our system works. Okay, so what we have here to do the MHG propulsion test is our electromagnet, our main water pipe, some salt, a mixer, a tub of water, two 12 volt, 18 amp hour steel lead acid batteries, some food coloring slash ink slash dye, and yeah, I think that's it. Make sure you have your wires can easily be hooked up to your battery and that um, your tub has enough salt water in it. So now we'll get on to doing the real test. So now before we put our electromagnet in, we're just going to test it real quick. So like I said, they're all hooked up in series, and we're going to hook it up to a 12 volt battery. So because the resistance of all the coils together, about 11 amps flow through, so you can go ahead and hook it up. You can see that it sticks, and I can lift the whole thing up. All right, the next one. All right. Good. And then another thing we had to do is make sure that all three magnets had the same direction of the magnetic field because no matter what direction the magnetic field is, it'll attract the metal. But that could mean that this ends south, this ends north, this ends south. So we took a permanent magnet and oriented it the same way each way and we felt to see if it was being pushed or pulled each time. So we finally got them wired correctly so that all three had the same field direction. So now we're going to put it all together, so we're going to turn on the electrodes. So now you can see the water slowing. You don't want to jam it through. Okay, now we're going to turn on the magnet. So now you can... You can sort of see, if you look closely, that there's not much of a flow going out through there, but there's a bigger flow going out through here. And we're gonna try to use food dye to show that a little bit better. So it's a little bit hard to see because the water's already a little murky. But you can kind of tell here that the water um, is getting pushed out from this side. You can see how the ink moves away from the pipe. And over here, it sort of gets sucked in a little bit. It's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to go over some, um, some tips on how to maybe make this better and some improvements that we're going to try to go through in, the next, in our next version. So first of all, you want to make sure that your electromagnets are powerful enough um, but you want to make sure they don't get too hot because a lot of times if you try to wind your own magnet, electromagnets, they can get really hot. So the main thing to think about is you want to make sure that the resistance of your coils is great enough so that when you apply a certain voltage, say 12 volts, that the current running through them is not too big to um, burn up the wire. So bigger gauge wire means it can handle more amps, but the problem with that is you can't normally fit as many turns because the wire gauge is bigger. So you want enough turns to increase resistance, but you want not too many turns, or you need enough turns to increase resistance so that your current is um, low enough to not burn up the wire. So you, normally I'd recommend using anywhere from like 16 to 18 gauge wire around that area. Get as many turns as possible. And then you still want the current to be high, but just not too high to burn it, because the higher the current, the stronger your magnetic field is. So. Um, yeah, and then the other thing that could definitely help is if you had six of these, or if we had a whole other rack of these magnets beneath the tube, so under the water, it would actually complete the magnetic field more, so it'd actually, it'd be like there was a north right here and a south right here, and that would make the field go all the way through the tube on both ends, and that would help, um, force the electrons out, because we only had kind of like a half halfway through magnetic field. Um, another thing, using aluminum foil for the electrodes 
it deteriorates pretty quickly because of hydrolysis or whatever it's called. So it oxidizes quickly, so then it starts to fall, excuse me, fall apart. So you might want to use um, real aluminum or like steel or something. Um, and then battery power. So we found that 12 volts, 12 volts works pretty well for for the pipe as far as getting the electrodes to you know transmit the electrons. But then, like I said earlier, you want to kind of mess with your turns and your current and your battery here to get really powerful electromagnets. So yeah. Um, oh, and the last thing that we're gonna do in our next in our next version is we're gonna try to get the. In addition to making more magnets, so we can have a full magnetic field, we're gonna try to get the magnets as close to the current flow as possible. So right now, because we have a round pipe, and the current only goes perpendicular to the plates, there's actually a gap in the tube that there's no current flow, but the magnetic field still has to pass through. So when you want to get that as, as close as possible to the current, so that the strong the strength of the field is really really strong. So yeah, that is the magneto hydrodynamic propulsion system. Bye-bye.